Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here with my Christmas haul video. This pretty much describes what I got for Christmas and what I bought with my Christmas money. So, and it's just pretty much one of those videos where I can just get into what I got this Christmas and kind of discuss how how cool some of the stuff was. Now, okay, so first item for this video. Uh, my main Christmas present, which is kind of like the big Christmas present you always ask for that you really pray that your parents get. And I got it. New, the new Xbox 360. Uh, this is the 4 gigabyte model, though. Uh, it, ha doesn't ha it doesn't have a hard drive. Uh, the memory is actually internal. So, yeah. Uh, I do recommend you do get the hard drive, though, because if you're going to be on Xbox Live, you're gonna have to there's going to be a ton of downloadable content. And uh, this is just the box, though. I, I don't have the actual Xbox with me. It's already set up, and I, I didn't want to move it for this video, so I just left it there. So this is just pretty much an empty box. And also the new models are Connect ready so, yeah. All right. And also, including other than the Xbox, I got a second controller with it, as well as a few video games, as well as I bought a few video games. First of all, Batman Arkham Asylum. This is highly recommended for any comic book fan. This is like a comic book fan's dream video game, okay? You play as Batman, you fight off. The gameplay is awesome with this because you really feel like Batman when you're playing this. It's fun, especially when you get when there's levels with armed with armed henchmen because then you can sort of like hang on gargoyles and then just like take them out and take them out secret in the shadows and stuff. It's pretty sweet. Uh, this came out, I think, maybe in 2009, I think. Uh, this was one of the main reasons why I wanted to get an Xbox 360, because this is for only 360 and PS3 only, and I figured 360 is better, from what I heard. Oh, other than Red Ring of Death, but my review was my friends. Two out of three were Xbox 360 guys. Still, this is an awesome game, and I would highly recommend it. Alright, moving right along... And uh, Halo Reach, got this. I uh, haven't really played this as much as I want to. I've been a little busy, so I have. Uh, I mainly got this for because it's a fun multiplayer game. You know, you can play with your friends and shoot stuff. I have played a lot of the firefight mode, and that is a fun mode. I love it. Pretty sweet. And uh, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. Uh, um, this game had mixed reviews on like IGN and. GameSpot, GameStop and stuff. But it's fun. I mean, if you have friends who are Mortal Kombat fr if you have friends who are Mortal Kombat fans or and if you're a DC Universe fan then I'd recommend it cuz it's a fun game and uh I haven't actually had a chance to test out the multiplayer of this yet, but I but a friend of mine is going to hang out tomorrow and we're going to test it out, so All right. Those are all my video games. Now for DVDs. Big Bang Theory Season 3. This is one of my favorite TV shows that I love to watch during the week. It's funny, and I get most of the... And what's really funny is whenever I watch the show with my dad, I usually get all the inside jokes with like comic books and other sci-fi stuff, and it's fun. It, it, this is a fun show. I, I really like it. It's great. Oh, also, this was the season where Will Wheaton first appeared as Sheldon's nemesis, so... That's another good reason why I like why I like this season in particular. All right, now then, uh, some more, more DVDs. First of all, Doctor Who: The Time Warrior. This is a story from the John John Pertweed era, and this was also part of the last season where John Pertweed was played the Third Doctor. Uh, this story is the first appearance of Sarah Jane Smith, as well as the first appearance of the Santarans. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. I like it. It's a nice introduction introduction to Sarah Jane Smith, and also this is the first story where the Doctor's home planet is named Gallifrey. So this is pretty fun. I'd recommend it to Sarah Jane fans and fans of the classic Doctor Who. And I've got another classic Doctor Who DVD that I bought, The Ark in Space. This what this took place during Tom Baker's first season as the doc as the fourth Doctor, and it was the first yeah the first time he was off. Off Earth. I mean, the first story with the first, with the fourth Doctor, he was on Earth working for solving a case for Unit, but now he w was in space, and there were, 
and he had to fight uh, giant bugs. If that's how I'd put it, but this is pretty fun. I like it. It's the classic stories are pretty good. If you, if you know, if you go in and you just, I mean, let me just say something about the classic series. Both of these. If you go in and you just think, oh man, the effects are terrible, then you're not gonna have a good time. But if you go in and you enjoy the stories, then they're really good. I like the cla I like watching classic Doctor Who. It's fun. I mean, the main reason I did start to watch classic Doctor Who was because of Sarah Jane Smith. And now I want to get other seasons. I want to get the fifth Doctor, the first Doctor, see where that all began and stuff. So I'm currently tracking those down. Not going to get them immediately, but because so, some DVDs are expensive and come in box sets only. So, you know, pretty fun. And speaking of Doctor Who, also have the fifth series on DVD. Pretty fun. Uh, the first season with Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor. Uh, going into Doctor Who, David Tennant was my first Doctor, and I didn't... And when I heard tons of stuff on Twitter about the new Doctor Who saying, about this season saying it's fun, it's great, I thought, okay, I'll give this show a shot. And I did watch David Tennant's first series first, and I do think think of David's the tenth doctor as my doctor, but I enjoyed Matt Smith. I mean he the eleventh doctor, he had a big shoes to fill and I'd say he filled them up pretty well. I mean he did a fantastic job. Uh I I love Karen Gillen as Amy Pond. She's my second favorite companion. Uh plus uh the new design of the Daleks, uh not so much. I don't understand why we had to, why they had to do that, but, I don't know, it's kind of good, I don't know, I kind of liked it that they went back to a pure Dalek thing, but they didn't have to make them so, the colors on the Daleks so bright. Because I did like that metallic look on the, revi on the new series Daleks. And, uh, okay, the packaging though, this is cool, because we got a nice little quote here from the Doctor, and, uh, the outside is just like the Pandorica, which is, Pretty sweet. Uh, if I had to choose my favorite story of the fifth series, though, I would say my favorite story is the Pandorica opens and the Big Bang uh, as a whole. That's my favorite story. But if I could only watch one episode, then I would probably go with Victory of the Daleks because that is fun. It's world set in World War II, Winston Churchill, and new Daleks. Even though I kind of have mixed feelings about the new Dalek paradigm. I still like the Daleks. They're my favorite villain. Well, favorite creatures of the Doctor Who universe. So, pretty awesome. Definitely get the fifth series if you can. And motion co and this little motion card cover. See? Ooh. Alright, and then my last DVD that I bought, uh, si The Sarah Jane Adventures Season 3. Uh, I like the Sarah Jane Adventures. It's Doctor Who for kids. That's its target audience. It's Doctor Who for the kids. You know, it's not as scary or something as Doctor Who, but uh, this season I would highly recommend because it is the last season. Well, it's the last recorded footage. Well, production wise, it's the last story featuring the 10th Doctor. Story wise, end of time. But production wise, this was shot after end of time. So, it's technically, production-wise, the last story with David Tennant as the Doctor. And I would recommend it, because this is a good se season. And I'd recommend the show, because it's Doctor Who for kids, sort of light, but it's fun. I like it. And I like Sarah Jane Smith. So, you know, if you're a Sarah Jane Smith fan and a Tenth Doctor fan, then get this season. It's awesome. Alright, now for graphic novels. Hardcover Infinity Gauntlet. This was something I bought maybe one week after my exams and I was home and I thought, give myself something nice because I did okay on my exams. Infinity Gauntlet is just basically, what is the Marvel Universe going to do when Thanos, who the villain of the story, is in charge of all reality? Okay, he's... And, they, and Thanos has... The Infinity Gauntlet, which allows him to control all of reality, and he could just pretty much do anything he wants now. Trap all the seven main entities in the Marvel Universe. Kill half... He killed half the Marvel Universe with just a snap of his fingers. And George Perez's artwork on this is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, George Perez did the artwork. He's a good artist. I like him, so... 
Yeah, this is a fun story. If you do like, if you liked Thanos, the Thanos Imperative or Annihilation, then I would recommend getting Infinity Gauntlet because this is a good story for Cosmic Marvel fans. It's great. Uh, I liked it. I didn't know much about it, but it was a good story nonetheless. So yeah, I would. So Infinity Gauntlet was a pretty good, good uh, call on that. That whole. Uh, okay, here's a book that I ordered off eBay. Uh, I think maybe a month. No, not a month. Like two weeks before Christmas, and it came after that. Young Avengers presents. Like I said in all my reviews for Avengers Children's Crusade, I am a huge Young Avenger. I am a Young Avengers fan, and this is a great graphic novel because each issue is gives is sort of a spot gives each Young Avenger a spotlight, uh, except for Wiccan and Speed because they're technically the children of the Scarlet Witch. So because they're brothers, they have to share an issue. Sorry, boys. Uh, you get a ton of good stories here. Uh, Patriot. My favorite stories are probably. A uh, patriot who meets up with Bucky Barnes and kind of discusses with him the true meaning of being a patriot and all that. Uh, Teddy, a.k.a. Hulkling, who meets with Captain Marvel, who's traveled back in time right before his death, so he has a chance to reunite briefly with his father. And uh, you got Billy and Tommy here who are searching for their mom, but that doesn't work. And uh, Haw Kate, Hawkeye, Kate, who's tr trying to deal with Hawkeye being back and what she's going to do about her identity. And uh, Cassie Lang and Vision. Well, Vision kind of works out trying to, with his relationship with Cassie and all that. And uh, Cassie Lang, who's sort of going through a self-conscious moment after the whole Civil War event. So, yeah. Young Avengers Presents is pretty good. Each Young Avenger gets their own story, and it's fun. It, you really get to know more about their characters. And, uh, okay, another thing that I bought after Christmas, both with all the sales and everything, was the entire run of Joss Whedon on Astonishing X-Men. Yep, it's only four volumes. Well, I'm holding three. Yeah, four. I bought all four volumes of Joss Whedon's run on Astonishing X-Men. And he wrote a good arc. I liked it. It was good. Good. He was building up to something... You can read each one individually as sort of, you know, you can read each of these individually. I mean, if you only have one, the option of getting one, then you could read them each individually. But if you read them all straight through, like in a row or something, you could see that Whedon was building up to something, which was the X-Men, which was a prophecy that one of the X-Men would destroy a planet and the... And the planet sent its one of its warriors back to kind of stop the X Men. First, it tried to uh, cure the mutant population, just like in X Men Three, a cure of its powers. That didn't work out. Another one, the fear of the danger room comes to life. And torn, uh, the X Men are attacked by the Hellfire Club, or in this case, it was Cassandra, no all orchestrated by Cassandra Nova. Yeah, that's right. I think I got that name right. And. Astonishing X-Men Volume 4. Well, this is just pretty much the big finale towards Whedon's arc and stuff. Uh, it's pretty fun, actually. I like it. I like I like it. It's good. The X-Men are sort of recovering after whatever big event decimated the team. I don't know. There's too many X-Men, so I don't really keep track of that that much. Um, it's fun. It's a fun arc. If you like, if you're a fan of Josh Whedon, then I'd recommend all four books. They're good. Now, now for another Marvel team that I read, The Ultimates Volume, The Ultimates, uh, the first series of The Ultimates, which if you've seen, if you've seen the movie, I saw Ultimate Avengers, that animated movie that this is based off of, before I read the books, and I kind of knew what was going on. You have the Avenger, the Ultimates fight the Hulk, and the Ultimates with the Hulk fight the entire. Invading Aliens. Uh, these are just pretty much reimagining the Avengers and are like all Ultimate Comics, and they take the origins of the Marvel Universe, but they put them in, in a 21st century setting. And it's fun. I like it. It's reimagining superheroes in the modern day. This is good. I, I mean, I can't really explain why I like it, but 
it, it's fun. It's just great. Especially the stuff with Captain America, though. I mean, he's sort of still recovering, but he's adapting to the modern day, while at the same time he's sort of stuck in, 19, in the 1940s. And, uh, yeah, I also bought the second series of The Ultimates, which is the sequel to that. And, uh, still pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I did like their take, and this one's sort of more aimed at Thor, because Thor in this, in the Ultimate Universe, was first perceived as an escaped mental patient, whose hammer and, whose hammer is actually technology, so... That's the idea, and Millar, Mark Millar, who wrote the series, did a good job. I really thought that Thor was gonna, that Thor really was an escaped mental patient, and I really thought Thor was an escaped mental patient. He, well, they made the argument so convincing, especially Loki's role in this. It was good. Uh, the villains, I do like how they kind of made, they sort of took the flaw of Hank Pym and sort of made that his main focus, though. The flaw being that he was a wife beer. It's sort of like they made... That's... Well, that's sort of more of a... I don't know if I should say I like it that much. I mean, they sort of took that one thing of the, orig of the original Hank Pym and sort of just focused all their attention on that for the character. Because it turns out, whereas mainstream Hank Pym only... Hit Jan once. This guy hit her. Re Ultimate Hank hit her repeatedly. And uh, even though Giant Man is seen on the covers, uh, he's not actually a big role in this series. I mean, he does kind of work for the opposing team on the uh, during Volume Two, but I've, but then he suddenly changes his heart and betrays them. So, you know, in the end, though, the Ultimates do learn that they shouldn't use government. They shouldn't work for the government anymore, and they just decided to leave. And they just decided, okay, we're we're not going to work for the government anymore. We're going to go freelance. Just you know, uh, this does take a lot of twenty first inch, twenty first issues, and sort of puts in the uh, in a comic book. And I like it. It's good. To, I like it when they you know reimagine Marvel with twenty first century setting. It's fun. Okay, my last graphic novel is another Ultimate title. Ultimate Comics Avengers, number one. Why did I get this? Um, well, this is supposed after Ultimatum, and the main, even though it does say Ultimate Comics Avengers, uh, it, the main focus here, I would have to say, would be Captain America. Okay, he j they finally introduced the Ultimate version of Cap uh, the Red, sorry, Ultimate Red Skull, and it turns out that he's Captain America's son. That is very that is a plot twist. Like one, the very first issue they say that they say, "Oh hey, uh, old Red Skull is Captain America's son." Wait, what? It's uh, uh, I thought it was good. Captain America went rogue and he kicked ass. I think this it was good. Uh, Captain America. He kicked a lot of ass, and in the end, he does see it. He takes down his son, who has the Cosmic Cube, and he takes him down. And also, in the end, and also during the story, Fury, who's no longer working for S.H.I.E.L.D., starts his own Black Ops team of like uh, of Hawkeye, War Machine, who else? Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, Hulk clone of Bruce Banner, a uh, Hulk clone that has Banner's mind in the Hulk body. Uh, Red Wasp, a uh, new Black Widow, and he does work with great with Tony. St and apparently, in this universe, Tony Stark has an older brother who now finance who sort of finances Fury's new team. So yeah, okay, that pretty much concludes what I bought for Christmas. Oh yeah, I did order two two other graphic novels off eBay. Uh, what were they? Oh yeah, Green Lantern, em Emerald Dawn, and Katie Pride and Wolverine hardcover edition. So yeah, that concludes my Christmas haul video. Uh, so leave me in the comments what did you guys get for Christmas, and that's all I have to say. So, Happy New Year, and take care.